Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Forest Vibes. So today we are starting out with a bit different of a view than we normally look at in the tent because today's video is all about the different types of mosses and Tillandsia that we grow. Now, as far as Tillandsia go, I only have the Spanish moss that we're looking at and one little Walmart generic one in the front there, but we'll take a look at that as well just for good measure. But um, the big focus of today is going to be the mosses. I have a little moss garden deal in the bottom of my tent here that's been going really well. I have two different types of sphagnum moss and I'm going to show you guys how I grow them and give you an update on them because it's been a while since we've taken a look. We're going to start off with this awesome Spanish moss right here because I have some really awesome news and I just can't wait to share it with you. So let's get right in here and get to it and take a look at it up close and I will show you just what's going on. So this is my giant wad of Spanish moss that I got from Andes last year and it has just done great. I am really pleased to say um, I know there was a lot of concern about the way that I did this plant because I used a type of metal to hang it from. Well I will tell you that the metal I used is coated so this plant, this Tillandsia, is actually not coming into contact at all whatsoever with any of the metal that I used to hang it. You'll see here where some of the paint has chipped off, that part is metal, but everything else here, especially through the bar, is absolutely covered and insulating this plant from otherwise being damaged by metal. These do get damaged by metal, but um, as you see here, hopefully you can see, it is very, very healthy, very happy. And I'm going to go ahead and get in even closer because we have some big news. This has opened up its first bloom. You guys see it? Of course you don't. It's right here. It's so tiny. So we're going to get in here close and we're going to take a look at it. So what we are looking at here is a bloom from Tillandsia usneoides. They are small little green whorls, little three lobed um, I guess petals or sepals, I'm not sure what that is on a Tillandsia flower. But I will tell you, what they lack in size, they absolutely make up for with fragrance. This is one of the best smelling things in my entire greenhouse. Just this one flower has an amazingly powerful scent. If you get within, you know, six to ten inches of it, you will smell it. Now, once this whole cluster of moss here has little flowers on it just like that and that's what they look like when you zoom out they're just little green specks you gotta really really look for them but once this thing is completely covered with these hopefully a little bit later this spring we will be in real real joy because the treat of having these is absolutely not only visually it looks really really neat to have this stuff but the fragrance you get off those little blooms is just phenomenal anyhow that's that's that all I do to take care of this thing, guys, it is super, super easy. I spray it down about twice a week, three times a week in the summer. I let it dry for a couple days in between. And in the winter, I tell you what, I think I've watered this maybe once a week. Um, it likes to grow more dry than moist for me at least because I keep an extremely high humidity in here. When it gets moist, it doesn't really want to stay wet for that long, I've noticed. It kind of likes to dry out. Um, like a Tillamnia or something like that pretty quickly if you think about it in orchid terms. Um, as far as other Tillandsias and stuff go, I've also noticed the same thing. They like to be watered pretty frequently, but they do not like to stay wet um, as far as I can tell. They really do seem to be prone to rotting if you keep them moist for too long. So that is my Spanish moss. That is an update on it. You guys can see how full it is and thick and um, awesome and it is just starting to come into bloom so hopefully we have lots and lots and lots of success with this this year and lots and lots more of these awesome tiny little flowers 
Alrighty, let's move on to the sphagnum moss. So in my grow area, I have two different types of sphagnum moss. I have the red sphagnum moss up here, and down below in the tubs, I have your standard green sphagnum moss. We're going to start with looking at these, because honestly, for whatever reason, the red has been growing a lot better for me as of late. So these are my two trays. This is how I grow them. I just grow it in, what do you call it, water culture or whatever. Um, and it does really well for me. I, I know that some people don't like this method, but it has been very, very fruitful for me. Now, the red sphagnum isn't all red, as you see right here. It does get a really nice, brilliant green color to it as well. But this winter, it has absolutely gotten its redness too. It's really, really neat. The mix of red and green just looks absolutely beautiful, at least I think so. And it's been really, really, really prolific. I mean, this one has grown so well for me. Um, I actually have the, one of the little cakey Drosera proliferas sitting right here in this tray growing, and it is doing really well, actually. So once I put it in this live moss, it just started to take off. That was kind of an experiment for me. So I think that's what I'm going to do when I take the larger plants out of the pot down below and divide them here soon. I think what I'm going to do is set them up in pots that have a little bit of peat in the bottom and then plug it all with this, span uh, with this red sphagnum moss and plant all of those in that because they really do seem to appreciate it. As far as feeding these guys go, I really don't. I give it kelp and cow mag sometimes but um, the proportions are very minuscule. It's like 30 parts per million for each. It, it's about the same that I would give my miniature orchids, and I only do that once every month or two. They really don't need to be nourished like that. Um, clean water, though, I, I put either distilled or my clean filtered water in the tray, and I do keep the tray topped up at all times. If you see this down here, that is the water level in these trays. This one's a little bit lower, but I mean, I definitely keep a tray pretty much full of water up to just below the top of the lowest points of the moss, if you see that. They are standing in water, and they grow really well. That is how they grow. A lot of them are bog plants, and they just grow floating like this. I've toyed around with doing the idea of the actual moss garden, and I think I'm going to do that here soon with the green sphagnum moss because it does not grow as well for me but I also think it's not getting the right condition so let's go ahead and pull those out we'll take a look at those and then we'll end this video with looking at my little bit of forest moss that I'm growing and you can see the progress there now this is one of my trays of my green sphagnum moss and you'll notice immediately it is not as healthy but we'll get to that in just a second both of these trays grow up here right in front of the window again just behind the shade cloth year round. They do get some light from the LEDs, but they get a lot of air movement from this fan up here, which is what I think dries out the tips. So I'm going to be moving these. Um, what I do want to do with this stuff is I do want to set up one of the, I'll pull this one out so we can look at them both together. I do want to set up one of the perpetual growing moss gardens like Lynn Smith did on her channel. I think that's a really neat idea. I do have a couple trays in my storeroom right now that I think are perfect candidates for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I think, one of these trays and I'm just gonna chop all of it down really fine. I'm gonna mix it together on the peat and I'm gonna let it grow and see if it'll take root and be a perpetual and endless supply of this stuff because as you see, it does really well in the same water culture I keep it in trays and everything else. I do use a lot of this stuff, so that's why it's not as thick and bushy as it once was. I've plucked and plucked and plucked and used tons and tons of this stuff on various orchid mounts and things like that. But um, yeah, it does well again. You see the real nice tips that stay low and stay moist. They are nice and green and healthy and growing new shoots, but some of the ones that stick up higher, like this right here especially, have started to dry out just because they're getting too much air, not enough moisture. The best solution to this problem, what I'm going to do today, is I'm going to nip these, cut them, chop them, and I'm going to stick them back down in here deeper 
so they can go ahead and grow on and not dry out and die completely because though it doesn't look good that will bounce back in a matter of days if given the proper hydration if you see there in the center the center of this is still green as long as that center is still green you guys have a chance it will not die I'm telling you this stuff dries out all the time in its natural environment once it gets restored with a lot of water to it it bounces right back so don't let the looks deceive you like I said if you look deep down in there you see tons and tons of green heads small ones new shoots coming up and that is what you can expect with this type of moss so same care conditions I don't feed it really I give it some kelp and cow mag every now and then but mostly just clean water and um, and the kelp max I think the kelp max they really does like it. it it reacts really well when you give it a little bit of that maybe once a month so that is that that is my last little bit of sphagnum moss and um, it is easy to grow guys so if you ever can get a hold of it that's usually the trickiest part don't be afraid you just throw it in a tray of water and it will grow guys it will um, I'll show you this moss garden technique. If you haven't seen Lynn Smith's video, I'll throw a link to it in the description of this video because it's really awesome. I guess she got the idea from someone else as well, but I'm going to give her credit for that one for now because she's the one who I saw it from first. So that is coming soon in my collection. I think we're going to take this tray and cannibalize it. This one's doing a little bit better. So that's that. And now we will move on to the forest moss. Down here on the dirty depths of my grow room floor I have a tray and in this tray what I did was take the clippings from my little terrarium that I have in the window of my storeroom that I collected material from the woods out here behind my house um, along the Potomac River in Northern Virginia and what I did was I put orchid bark I put sphagnum moss, I put perlite, and I put charcoal in the bottom of this tray and I flooded it with water. I let it get real soggy and I keep it that way and this moss just thrives. I collected this from kind of a boggy little riparian area around the river because I intended to use it in a terrarium in a very very moist environment. There's about four or five different types of mosses growing in here and the occasional mushroom that pops up, believe it or not, little yellow mushroom. So that to me is awesome. I, um, I love this little thing. It's constantly putting up moss spores in my environment. I'm constantly getting this moss here, especially popping up on my mounts. And this moss here, this badge moss, is just awesome. It's a great texture. I very frequently mix this in with my live sphagnum moss on my orchid mounts, especially the Draculas and stuff and it just looks really neat and I have um, star moss and hair moss fern moss and some other things growing in here as well so I will constantly be adding to this taking from it but it really does bounce back quickly I, um, I again I use this quite frequently with some of my mounts nowadays I think it looks awesome and it makes everything look really natural and it's just a beautiful little spot of green um, I do have plans this year on going out to the woods very soon actually and gathering some more moss so we can make another tray or two and we can always have a perpetual supply of this stuff as well because it does add a lot to the grow space. Anyhow, I hope you liked my video. I'm going to end it up right there. I do appreciate all of you guys watching. I hope you learned something and um, yeah, so mosses are awesome guys. I love them. I have them growing all over the place. I mean, you can even see back here on the ground and the floor of my grow tent under some of my moist growers, I have mosses growing. It is this little devil right there. So awesome stuff again, guys. If you put moss in your tent, if you grow orchids, you will get moss on your mounts especially if you find something that puts up spores as vigorously as this hair moss or thread moss right here. So anyhow, that's my video. Like I said, I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and feel free to ask me any questions down in the comments below because I do love to help you guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay safe and happy growing.
yeah guys mosses are awesome mossum if you will <laughs> oh that's terrible